Good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, early December, sorry, late November, the <laughs> planning committee. Um, we have one member of the public present tonight, uh, Maggie Trant from Wall Street. Maggie, um, you have up to 15 minutes. I guess we know what you're going to talk about. So. Please, please. Okay. the floor is yours. The floor is mine. I'm here about our school yet again. Um, just to keep you in the picture and to also inquire as to whether a new planning application is required. If my concerns are accurate, but I won't know until tomorrow, and you'll need to preempt it. Uh, they put in no agreed rights and a planning enforcement notice. Um, was issued. This has not even been looked at yet. It also states non reflective grass, and there are clear, it's definitely clear glazing, but it's coming I mean, it's gone in for the planning application and it hasn't even been gone anywhere. It's still sitting. Power water drainage was submitted on the 10th of August last year, 2020. They're still awaiting a decision. It states no work shall commence until the scheme approved in writing by local planning authority. It is now completed. Historic buildings report has been approved, but no report available. The comment I received was do not have to submit until completion of the building. Large windows on the east and west of the building to be changed and design approved as part of planning approval to protect amenities. Planning enforcement comment was. Work in progress. Signs at least one panel on every large window being plaster boarded on the inside. The space next to the glass has fluffy insulation against cracks and broken panes, and there is no waterproof membrane. Building control are currently advising on secondary double glazing, but current glazing is not at level three obscurity as per plans. The communal facilities have now been abandoned. As the basement height of 1.8, as pointed out in the investments when you were there. Um, in March 20, the owners have tried to dig out the floor level, but they have undermined the footings of the building. They've now refilled it with concrete back to the original level. Cooking facilities, etc., are now to be fitted into each flat, nine in total. This is what I can't confirm because time control is somehow to become my best friend. Um, is on holiday until tomorrow. The rear extension, which was built on the listed garden wall, has now been demolished. No response from Buckingham Heritage, and the wall has not been reinstated to its original state. A waste recycling plan has not been fitted, not been submitted, but now listed on Find My Bin as 11 bin sites on the council website. A new water mains is to be fitted for retrofitted sprinkler system, but all flats are carpeted. The pavement has been dug up and the water mains are exposed to the elements, no barriers. A man has been out, looked down the hall, said, Yes, this is illegal, bye bye. Mr. Mayberries. <laughs> I've written to Virgin Patrol and asked, Has one flat been sacrificed to provide alternative laundry and kitchen communal facilities? Or are each of the nine flats being fitted out? He returns from work tomorrow, and that's when I'll get my answers. My question really is if this has moved from a class C3 D1, will they need a new planning application if it is now nine self contained flats? Where will the parking be? Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Anyone have any questions for Maggie? Castle Tuckbrook. I'm not going to comment on the application per se, but um, please write to me the points that you've raised and copy me into the correspondence you receive. Um, I'll follow it up um, as, an, as a consequence of the quote. What I'd like to do is comment, comment on the application, if that's okay. I don't want to prejudice my 
Karen Cummings on behalf of Buckingham Society. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, we heard from Maggie on Friday at our meeting, and we were absolutely horrified at the extent of the flouting of all the conditions. But most of all, nine self contained flats, possibly, um, which sounds more than likely, as opposed to nine bedsits with communal facilities. It's a very, very different proposition. And we thought this really needed raising to the highest level. And I'm pleased that Council Staffordshire will make an inquiry about it. But is there anyone else that we can take this to? It is, it is just beyond a joke. Yeah, if I could just draw your attention on the action list tonight, we do have this ongoing item about reported unauthorised work. Um, at the committee's um, instigation, Catherine has made three update requests on the 29th of July, on the 7th of September, and the latest on the 21st of November, just last week, uh, October rather, um, and no reply. Uh, we, still, we were awaiting the officer's return from leave, which was a quick excuse, but uh, I think again we need to raise this again, taking Maggie and your comments in, into Miles Melwood is the planning enforcement officer. And the McDougal is the planning officer. Thank you. Tessa Stutchford. If you um, <coughs> please copy um, Catherine's uh, response about after you do this tomorrow, I will endeavour to talk to Catherine and make sure any response is appropriate. I can't do this comment while I'm going to say. And building control cannot enforce anything. They are only there to approve the work that's done and have no liability to the plans. As I pointed out, well, it's not level three obscurity on the existing window. Oh, that's nothing to do with me. I just have to ensure that what they're doing is correct. Thank you, thank you very much. We're, we're, we're as dismayed as you are about you. this ongoing problem. Thank you for keeping on top of it. And please continue to draw it to our attention if, if necessary. I want to be fair with that next one. Thank you. No other public speakers. Um, in that case, we can start the meeting. You're welcome to stay, Maggie. <laughs> no, I'll let you know. Right. <laughs> stay warm. So, um, first of all, apologies for absence, Louise. No apologies for absence. We do have Councillor John Harvey, um, who is remote. Uh, John, you understand tonight you can speak, but you won't be able to vote because you're not actually in the chamber. So. I understand, and I'm fed up and distressed that the government still have resolved this legislative uh, hole, and they really should, given the, uh, the, the worrying news in the last few days. You know, we should be able to operate remotely. We shouldn't have to meet and possibly increase the level of infectiousness um, of any of the variants of the virus. Uh, so I've taken, a, I've, I've taken, I've been responsible. I've done what the government told me to do. So I'm staying at home to, 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 uh, to reduce my risk and reduce everybody else's risk too. Thank you, John. That is my um, item two. Declaration of interest. Anyone have any personal or prejudicial interest on the item? No, I'm just um, to declare that I won't comment on time applications at the start of the meeting, so I don't have to do it. Thank you very much, Robin. And, uh, and just to say, I have nothing in my inbox from Democratic Services of Public Chair advising me of any regulation changes. And if I did, I would have automatically brought them to the town club. Thank you. Uh, minutes of the last meeting, which was Monday, November the 1st. You've all seen them. Is everyone happy with those? Yeah. Okay, so if they have been presented to council, we just for final approval. Thank you. Um, item four, Buckingham Neighbourhood Plan, Vale of Aylesby Plan. We have a report from Sheehan McNerty, our town plan officer, on the Article 4 directive, which Buckinghamshire Council has proposed to protect the core shopping areas in the county from undesirable conversion of retail units to residential use. Uh, uh, Chair, if I may, uh, Sheila was intending to be here. I'm currently exchanging messages while she tries to log on. I uh, wonder if the appropriate delay to down the agenda. Yeah, yeah. with yeah. members' agreement, we'll delay that until Maggie yeah. yeah. Item five, North Bucks Parishes Planning Consortium. You will have seen a document attached called um, North Cities of the Ark, which is an extremely good read. Um, as you know, Councillor Anthony Ralph is our representative on the parishes planning consortium. 
Thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, in, in fairness, um, when Catherine and I left home the stock because we weren't sure whether we were actually going to get that in time for the agenda, and, and uh, Catherine kindly put it in. And it, it's a very good document, and I would just recommend everybody, all councillors, to actually read it because it really does cover the ground pretty thoroughly. And maybe we could even uh, bring it up at a future meeting for further discussion once everybody's had a good chance to read it. Because it's it's more than half a page, you know, it's it's a comprehensive document. Yeah, I would presume that our um, town plan officer, Sheena, has, has seen it, if not. I would assume so, I, yeah. I, I can't verify that. Absolutely. Thank you, but if she hasn't, then we, we should put that in, in front of her. Absolutely. That's a touch bit. Yeah, firstly, um, um, thank you, Count County Ralph, for going to the meeting, and thank you for um, Catherine and Anthony for putting this together. It is a substantive document. It raises large areas of concern, which we should pay an interest in. If you looked at um, pages, uh, page numbers 307, it's number, and if you look at them, you look at the bandwidth of the developments of which they're saying in the Cambridge Octagon, you've only got to look at those bandwidths. It takes you most of Buckinghamshire within it. So the idea that this is a North Central or centric policy, which and a thin sliver is, is erroneous. It also mentions about infrastructure, it also mentions about with type of houses, with railway links, and anything else concerned with it. It is a thoroughly um, precise and powerful document, even down to the NHCLG stuff in there. So I think that this is a worthy enough of further explanation because, of course, you will know in the other place, being down in Amsbury, that Buckinghamshire Council have not have left the Cambridge Art Group. Mm -hmm. The reason expression of that was because the Cambridge Art Development Group, before there was five councils in Cambridge Art and Buckinghamshire, now they've only got one voice. So consequently, any decision by a majority vote, which was negative to Buckinghamshire, would automatically carry it away. I'm not sure whether that would, that's the council's position, it's for them to explain it. But I do think that this needs to go further and we need to be more public about this. If there be a small window of opportunity for us to talk about this if, if and when the decision starts to be made. So I'm not sure who should do it, but I think a public examination and discussion of the facts within this would be immensely healthy, informative, and a constructive way to go. I say that because there are different views, as you all remember, about the expressway and there's different views about the day of the Cambridge on. And two of the sites which were theoretically cited for the new towns, new cities, if you recall, one was possibly going to be down in the plain of the Great um, um, and Grand and Underwood. And the other one was possibly was cited to be out in between Milton Keynes and, um, and Winter. Now that was only possibilities. But this is what we're talking in, in, in possibilities. And we have already seen serious insult to the environment through um, HS2. And we have seen serious challenge, which is being delayed at the moment, cancelled temporarily, I should imagine, in the Cambridge Expressway. So I don't know through the chair whether we can contact or use Anthony's good um, knowledge to wonder whether a webinar or something could be put together where David Locke has put this paper together. We heard and read David Locke a lot, and he's very thorough, um, could actually have a bit of a public conversation about this. When I say a public conversation, I mean a conversation of parishes and and side societies, because what I don't think would be at this stage is to have a public conversation with Buckinghamshire Council, because I think people need to be informed before they have that conversation with Buckinghamshire Council. And also Buckinghamshire Council will be drawing up work towards its new emerging Buckinghamshire plan. But you can't engage in that conversation unless you have the veracity of the information in advance. So from you, Chair, would you agree that it's worth going back to um, even Mr. David Locke or 
I apologise, Anthony, I forgot the organisation of the meeting. Um, the BBC. Yeah, to see whether they would be interested in doing that. Because I think somebody needs to be talking about this stuff. Because if decisions are made um, and white papers are drafted and legislation is put in and we have no right to comment on it, we would have let down everybody. And it, uh, in the sense that this is a really big decision, not only for the future of Black Engineer, but the national issues with it as well. Thank you, Councillor. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm more than happy to write to the Secretary of the PPC and suggest it because I think it, it needs to be a group. And, and here we are, what was it? About something like 40 town and parish councils in, in the group, and it needs to go at least that broad. Bearing in mind what Councillor Suchbury said when we discussed before, it isn't a ribbon, it's actually a great swathe of the whole of the area. And, and our voice will be so small compared with at least all the other parishes. And even then, it, it would be a, a somewhat sort of virtue anyway, but nevertheless, it would carry a lot more clout, I think. And also, I think we need a fairly common um, idea of how we all want to persuade, uh, to proceed, simply because if we all go off separately and give differing versions of, mm -hmm. of our points of view, then we just sort of shoot each other in the foot, you know, like the old Mexican thing where everybody shoots everybody else's foot, and that would not be a good mm -hmm. thing. Would members uh, be happy for Councillor Ralph to write to yeah. Jeff Culverhouse at the NBD yeah. Thank you very much. I mean, just the, um, it, just for ease of whatever that that maybe um, town clerk and that council have to do that letter together if if, if that's a, a decision of the council yeah. because then it's got the imprint of the town yeah. council on it, which is a decision of this council and the imprint of the town clerk, which is not not that Anthony is not a great person, but I mean, the imprint against it. Of the town council's agreement sure. is going to give you more voice. Thank you. Um, action reports. You've had the action reports for you. Um, just one too quickly. Bypass Bridge, this ongoing thing. Council of Light, we have had a communication from today saying he is meeting transport for Bucks tomorrow. This is about the um, road collapse at the bridge and the bypass just below um, the bottom roundabout. Um, trees, Mr. Passmore being invited to a meeting. Town clerk to report on any progress? No progress. As yet. <laughs> <laughs> Town hall frontage, Councillor White is reporting on that. He said likewise, he still has meetings going on. Um, it hasn't hasn't been overlooked. What fellows hall you've heard about tonight? Um, signage. Turin Market Hill is on the agenda tonight, and Castle Street sign repair is apparently in progress as of the 19th of November. Anything else on here? Uh, Councillor Touchwood. Just to say that um, we circulated um, emails today on the response we got in July, in which July, to do with the, um, the bridge um, from um, TFB Transport Bucks. Now, it's it's gone back. If if Councillor well, Warren White is able to get a better response, then they didn't see it as a strategic issue, and it wasn't going to be cited at that point. Um, but for him, um, um, they did say in that response that I did make it public at the time, and then we kept it on the agenda because it was down for both um, Councillor White and Richard to respond. Now, if they've moved forward from their pronunciations of what can scheme, I think we need to circulate that email from the new chair to the members of the club. And um, and the response was given in July. And then we were hoping for something different. This hasn't only gone on since July. This is something that I believe you raised probably in the February or January. 18 months ago. 18 months ago. Yeah. So this is 18 months ago. Of deliberation about an approval scheme. Now, that area of the bridge they didn't consider was um, failing in the way we suggested it was. But I did go that way today again, and it clearly continues to be breaking up either side of it. So I wish and um, have to write every success. Um, 
Um, I hope that he can get a different response. Because that will allow me to go back to the officer and ask why do you get different response to different councillors, won't it? Um, because they should be um, at least clear in their direction. And perhaps they, maybe there's an exception to this a serious issue. But well, we'll know more after the meeting tomorrow. Councillor Hardy. Yeah, I want to kind of build on what, what Robin's saying there. Because I mean, I've reported about three street lights uh, that are out in recent weeks. And in each report, the, 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 the council have come back and said, um, work in progress, they're, they're gonna be fixed, therefore we're taking them off the system. But surely work in progress means it actually is work in progress, not that they put on a long list and they'll get around to them sometimes next, sometime next August. I, I'd like us as a council to write to the, um, uh, I'm not sure who, someone in Buckinghamshire Council to say, can we just have some clarity here what that actually means, this work in progress? Because it seems to me it's just a way of kicking the can down the road, reducing the number of Fix My Street um, uh, outstanding uh, reports. And meanwhile, jobs are just not getting done. I mean, I you know that I say three street lights near where I live uh, that remain not being fixed. It's just not good enough. We need to find out just how this is being treated and whether the whole system of reporting is basically failing. Thank you. Um, yeah, they must have a timeline. So maybe if um, Councillor Harvey's suggestion, we can ask that question. When you have a working in progress status, do you work to a timeline or is it just open ended because it shouldn't be open ended? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is anyone happy we should do that? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, anyone else on action? List? No, thank you. Um, no sign of Sheila yet, so So the meeting welcomes Sheila McMurphy, our town plan officer. Sheila, we have put item four back on the agenda, uh, so we, we can we can now be delaying it. So um, to receive your report, thank you very much on the article four directive. Buckinghamshire Council proposed to protect the core shopping areas in the county from undesirable conversion of retail units to residential use. Just to be absolutely clear, the government white paper has said that in conservation areas you cannot um, do this about the normal process, but there's now a further plan, isn't there, that the core shopping area needs to be protected, but we also believe that that core shopping area should be expanded a little bit in, in sort of the various streets. But you did make the point in the report that you cannot go for a blanket. Yes. Coverage. Thank That's you. That's correct. Um, just to say, yes, one of the things is obviously this has been put forward by Buckinghamshire Council. Um, and it's a question of really supporting whether the council would like to support this. Um, we are obviously mentioned in it um, and um, likely to be included in it. Uh, it's the primary frontages from the Buckingham uh, Neighbourhood Development Plan. Um, the question I posed was whether or not we wanted to lobby a little bit to get our secondary frontages included in that as well. Um, you're absolutely right, Mr Chairman, that um, it does affect, it doesn't apply in conservation. Well, it applies in conservation areas, it doesn't apply to listed buildings. And this is where actually Buckingham is going to get a large measure of protection because an awful lot of our retail um, shops um, are in listed buildings. So um, this permitted development rights will not apply if it is a listed building. It will have to go through the normal planning application. Um, that gives us quite good protection in Buckingham, but I would say that it is probably still worthwhile to support Buckinghamshire Council's Article 4 um, initiative um, to protect those retail premises that are not listed buildings in Buckingham. Thank you, Shuni. You did, you did actually itemise, didn't you, several um, areas in this, uh, Meadow Road, um, the Hidden Quarter, I can't let me it's hard to stuck together. Um, yes, I think the point I was, I was making is that our primary frontages in the Buckingham Neighbourhood Development Plan was where 
chosen on the basis of what retail mix we wanted to have there, that they weren't necessarily what we thought were the core shopping centre. I think our core shopping centre was probably the primary and secondary, but we subdivided that in terms of retail mix. Um, so it's designed a slightly different purpose, I think, from what's been picked up in the Article 4 report. Um, and I think that's maybe one of the points we, if, if, if the committee wishes, we make to um, Buckinghamshire Council that we might ask them to consider the secondary advantages. Because I think the core shopping centre, a view that could be taken anyway, is that whilst there's the immediate impact of the, um, the main street, um, it is also one of the charms of Buckingham is the, the sort of going off down a side street and finding um, different shops, etc. So I think one of our sort of offers to people is that, and I would say that makes it part of the core shopping area. And I think we are well within a subsection of the town centre that we're not going to be accused of, of going for a blanket. So what, what would your recommendation be to the committee that we actually name the streets we want covered in that? Um, I think we could simply say to them, um, could you take the secondary frontages as well, because that would um, pick up on the description and the map in the Buckingham and Neighbourhood Development Plan, which is probably the easiest thing for them to reference. Thank you. So, uh, Councillor Touchfield. Yeah, firstly, um, it's got quite a history to it. Councillor and we have um, one of the Buckinghamshire councillors. Um, she um, first raised this by um, several questions at council and a written question to cabinet. Um, as a result of that, um, there was an acceptance and they brought back at the next council to look at Article 4 directives. Now, it does include many illustrious towns like Chesham, um, Aylesbury, and Beaconsfield, um, um, and um, Chelfham, there's lots of other places, including Mar like Marlow and Risperus, um, and, and the bottom end, Winslow and Abbey. Um, so it does include lots of other places as well. So this is a big Buckinghamshire thing. So the idea that it's all about North Buckingham is uh, Buckingham South and Drop. One of the things that I think we need to uh, do, as she says, is to get established whether they're, they're willing to actually engage in extending it out. Um, there's lots of there's a briefing um, that they sent out, they referred to the NPF, they referred to all these things that she will understand better than I will. Um, the types of planning regulations around what she it was doing, but we do need to know, and they also mentioned in the briefing I said about local plans, and how it could be formulated into a local plan or part of a local plan. So I think we do need to ask more than the one question about um, bringing the shop frontage because the acceptance is there, the councils agreed it. Um, so that's now council policy. What will happen now, I presume, is somebody will actually write the policy um, in the sense that um, there's going to be a rigid framework around it. So I think this is the right time for us to assume the to try and get the extended shop fronts into it. Um, signal the fact that we've got lots of historic buildings and have a pick through the legislation to give assurance that we're right. Um, because it, it's, it's with some of the communities, it, obviously in South Buckinghamshire, who were raising these issues as well as ourselves. So we're not our own, and we're definitely not the only community that wants to protect. Um, the historical shop front So I hope that that's a reasonable prospect that we do need to go forward at least on a bit of a twig with the local plan question as well, because it would be really sad if we didn't make a local plan. And by the terms of the local plan, we need to ask whether this is going to be a consideration into the May new Buckinghamshire plan as something which actually goes in so that when Planners sit in a meeting and discuss planning, they can refer to the Buckinghamshire plan, saying the Buckinghamshire plan policy, such and such, so and so. But this is something that gives rigor to it. Now, maybe all of those things are legally um, not possible, but um, we are an ever moving 
best. So I hope those two things additional to Sheila would be useful. Thank you. But presumably Sheila's is destined for the neighborhood plan as well. Um yes, I mean if that's what uh, um, is yeah, the yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I mean, subject to consultation and uh, etc. But yes, that would yeah. be one of the things that we would definitely be looking at. Yeah. Um, Karen, just before I come to you, Paul, how would you advise we proceed with this? Then we just take out our case and name the streets we would want. Yes, that's the push. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. The Pushing's recommendation. Certainly, we get the impression about them shipping out so they're keen to engage yeah. us. So we'll thank you. It's a positive. Karen. Um, yes, can I just ask Sheila if the Article 4 Directions um, framework was, I think, designed to, to make sure that people put in planning permission mm -hmm. for alterations to elevations and yes. windows and things. Is it envisaged that this Article 4 Direction will encompass that as well as the change of use? It seems from the plan that it would just be the change from the report, it would seem to be that they're talking about change of use. They haven't said anything about um, additional. Um, the, the, the normal career yeah. development rights, but I don't know whether they can actually exclude exactly. Um, yeah. that so it may well be that that will be a little torn, as yeah. you say, but certainly there's just nothing in the report to say and it will include this. Yeah. Uh, and maybe it will be that that's something we would, yeah. 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 Thanks, thank you, Shane. No one asked for any questions. Could someone uh, propose that we adopt Shane's report? Yeah. Thank you. Um, we, oh, a a friend, friend actually <laughs> had a hand up for us. So, proposed by <laughs> Councillor Davis. <laughs> and seconder. <laughs> seconder. Yeah, Councillor O'Donoghue. <laughs> All those in favour? <laughs> you know, I'm just hoping that will include the add on conversations which were suggested. Yeah, we, we, we can trust our officers to yeah, prepare them all. Uh, yeah. Councillor Harley? Yeah. No, oh, just still, still being very good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Sheila, thank you so much for that. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, thanks for coming tonight. Sorry, I was going to say, if you would excuse me, because I'm very conscious that I've dashed out the house and I haven't tested recently, so I don't want to be here <laughs> 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 longer than a test three for you. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, Sheila. Thank you. Thank you. Right, just also, you'll notice there's also a report to the Cabinet, which is uh, superseded by what? Um, she has told us tonight. Um, item seven: planning applications. Um, next schedule: Buckinghamshire Council, North Buckinghamshire Planning Area Committees, Wednesday, fifteenth of December, um, and then January the twelfth. Strategic Site Committee, sixteenth of December and twentieth of January. Uh, anything to add, Catherine? Well, actually, okay. <laughs> <laughs> They are happening. Anything for us? Um, no, not at the moment. Not at the moment. But I would quite like them to put the minutes up for strategic from the 18th because that was sold and chosen. I don't know what I decided. Mm. Thank you. Right, we move on then to the first item on the planning applications 22 Market Hill. This is a shop name, Basia Sign. Anyone have any comments on this? Just, just to say, um, it shouldn't be illuminated. It wasn't quite clear from the application whether it was or wasn't. Yeah, in fact, the heritage officer in his report does say, um, I've no objection to the works providing the main projecting signage is non illuminated. He didn't say internally or externally, he just said non illuminated. So, so I'm not just happy with that, provided that the heritage officer's advice is followed. Thank you. Item two, number nine, Mayflower Street. This is up on Lace Hill. Um, it's an application for a single story side extension and park conversion of a garage. It does retain two parking spaces, which is all that's required for a three bedroom house. There has been one um, comment against it. But the comment says that if the family should get a third car, where would they put it? So that is not really a planning issue for us. We can't, we can't try and guess what might happen yeah. in the future. Do you have any uh, comments on this? No. no? Thank you. All we'll, we'll read them. Yeah. Item three, number 60, Morton Road. This is a householder application for two 
part two of the story front extension, an attached garage. It's got concrete cladding rendered to the external walls, and the concrete cladding being upstairs quite high. Um, I think uh, Councillor Ralph would like to talk on this. Well, I just um, the, the magic words overdevelopment for a start. And then once you've overdeveloped and you plastered it with concrete, it's horrible overdevelopment. I think that's a fair comment. I'm quite happy to talk about the detail. One of the tiny little things I picked up, the, these tiny things I think are important. There's a little side window which comes out like this. And each of the houses in that row have got them. And it's part of the vernacular of that row. They want to just flatten it and make it more boring, I think. <laughs> so all in all, I'm not happy about it. And I think Carolyn uh, Buckingham Society concurs with that. Carolyn? Uh, yes, we do. And, and also, particularly on the cladding issue, I actually did look up central anthracite grey fibre <laughs> cement uh, <laughs> weatherboarding. And it may be a very fine product uh, when you're by the seaside. Um, or, or indeed in the some sort of it may look rather sort of Scandinavian, shall I say. And the fact that this is uh, added on to a uh, substantially brick house, particularly in a line of houses that are all are brick, I think we think this would be really out of place. Thank you. Any other comments? So you're going to make a recommendation, Anthony? Yes, I think we should oppose this. On the grounds of overdevelopment, underdevelopment, and way out of line with the vernacular of the rest of the street. With the, with the Buckingham design guide, basically. And, and that's yes. what we yes. you. Second of that? Yeah. Councillor O'Donoghue, thank you. All those in favour? We oppose it. Yes. Oppose and determine. Give me a yes. Could you just put hands up again so all can turn? Thank you. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Six. Thank you. Those against? Extensions? I like extensions. Oh, Robin, he said we put out the video. Martin. Yeah, we've only got Martin, yes. So two extensions. Thank you very much for that. Um, the fourth application is number eight. Lots of being close. Um, sorry, where, where's the lovely place? Just for my um, it's, it's on page two. Page thank you. Yeah. It's just, of course, overlooking the just before you get to where they'll talk. Yeah. Um, so, household application for single story rear extension. The notice only went up today, so neighbours may not yet be aware of it. We'll note that in the company. Um, it has got adequate parking, um, but it's also got a log burn has been put in the extension with quite a tall stainless steel chimney, which has been noted by our friends on the Buckingham Society. Now, Carolyn, do you want to talk on this? Or? No, we know the tall chimney. It is at the rear of the property. Um, we think it's for the neighbours to comment, really. Um, yeah. We didn't have particularly any material. Yeah, they most obviously won't have a chance here. Yeah, they won't have a chance. went up today. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone? Any comments on this? Um, perhaps a try. Just a jokey one. Really, they've got the uh, electric charging point yes, in the front, but a uh, <laughs> chimney, <laughs> chimney log burner around the back. <laughs> it just balanced it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did notice that at briefing this afternoon. <laughs> Thank you for that. So, everyone happy with that? Yeah. Thank you. So, obviously, subject to neighbours' neighbors comments. Um, the next one, I. Application number five is eight needle pin way going back up to Basil. This has not yet had a planning notice uh, displayed. So, household application for a garage conversion and single story rear extension. Um, this is it's a flat. And what they're proposing to do is convert the ground floor of the flat, which is the garage, into accommodation. That is adequate parking. They've got one and a half parking spaces behind it. Anyone like to comment? 
to set them back. Yeah, it's actually quite a tidy development. Mm -hmm. um, they're putting the boiler in its own little house next to the tower with its own room. Perhaps a day is. I'm looking at this. I'm wondering where the boiler is now. Presumably it's currently in the garage. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering whether they are saying it's a living room. And it's actually going to be a bedroom because it's got a shower in attached to it. That's my thoughts when they hear the plans. Right. I don't actually say where the existing boiler room is, but there is a store at the back of the stairs in the, off, off the garage. Could be in there. Yeah. Which is what they're converting into the, the downstairs room. Um, shower room. Mm -hmm. Which I would, I would um, say is possibly being on the street. Because uh, they're, they're still got the retaining the land to keep them upstairs, aren't they? Yes. I mean, we, we're not told what they, whether they're actually making it into a granny annex or something like that. Just accommodation for somebody who's not able to make, make the stairs. So we're just not told that. Mm. Is there a wish to uh, cut the track? I don't have a problem mm -hmm. with the uh, application, but I think somehow, although it's not part of this, we do have to be wary about losing this sort of housing stock because it's being almost overdeveloped within its own remit, and therefore you lose what it was being built for. Um, that was my comment, full stop. Oh. I mean, as far as we can see, it's staying a single, a single room flat, isn't it? Yes, two, two bed, isn't it? Yeah, a single bedroom flat. Two bed. Two, sorry, two bedroom flat. But it is a single flat, yes. Yeah. So not, not hiding off of an annex or anything. No, yeah. The price of so really, a council try the stock isn't changing from that point of view. Anyway, any other comments? Anyone? Are we all happy with that generally? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We'll proceed. Right. Next one is item six: first floor, London Market Square. This is the uh, bank chambers. Over the what was Barclays, it's the dentist there. It's displayed of two fascia signs and one hanging sign. Um, they're not going to be illuminated. We've seen Catherine some comments, I'm sure, on this. Interesting, we noticed in the application that uh, the three side views from the High Street Market Square, the third one is from Hoon's Valley Way. Rather than market hill, yeah, it makes that <laughs> technically it's correct. <laughs> well, yes, so we need to find a sign first. <laughs> <laughs> so, is everyone happy with that? Yeah, thank you. Um, that brings us to item seven. I'm um, sorry, <laughs> application seven. YPAC group in London Road, um, proposed extension to link existing factory and storage facility. Both storage warehouse and unit service yard. If they count in case of the application, this is to actually lessen the number of um, vehicle movements they have to make because they bring more stuff onto site. Um, members, I hope, would feel this is a sign from White Pack that they are intending to be here long term. Yeah. They're one of our oldest employers in the town. Yeah. The planning notice has not yet gone up, but uh, would only affect neighboring businesses rather yeah. than. Any resident, any residences? Yeah, I'm happy with that. You're both happy? Thank yeah. you. And the last one um, of the applications is for 17 Westfields. This is some um, the estate on Route Tindrick Road. Household application for a single story road extension, and it's an amendment to an approval which is already given and to which we have no objection. Yeah, fine. I'm happy with that. Thank you. We've got amended plans here. 
which can be viewed together. Um, 15 marks square. This is display of um, fascia sign with exterior lighting, which is a retrospective one. You, you may remember we noticed there was strip lighting over the lintel to the shop front. Mm. This has been now on, um, what's the word, Catherine, regularized? With... Included in the description. Yeah. Is everyone happy with that new description there? Mm. Uh, Catherine Trump? It may be included in the new description, but is it not allowed? So is it is it not allowed? It external be, lighting. External lighting is fine. It's the internally lit letters that we don't allow in the conservation area. Oh right, okay. So you know the sort of board fascia with internal lighting. Right. These are our own. This is a strip light that comes out in the bracket. Okay. Sorry. We allow spotlights as well. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So everyone happy with that one? Thank you. Um, not for consultation, although we will. <laughs> We've got 28 more hen way application for lawful development certificate for proposed single story rear extension. Um, as we said, it's all at the back. It's not overlooked by neighbors. Um, doesn't require Notice to go up, Carolyn. And I agree, it is a fairly innocuous single step story rear extension, but actually it's quite substantial. And it, it, I just question why it's an application for a local development and not a normal planning application, because we have so many applications for single story rear extensions. Mm. Um, and this seems more substantial than most. And although we don't object, it's just really odd that it comes up under this particular type of application or not for consultation. Could we put that to Catherine? Okay. I, think, I think it's, I'm getting more and more of an impression that it's arbitrary. Um, it may be something to do with the, I mean, it's a five bedroom house, isn't it? So it, it's quite a big house to start with. It may be a percentage increase. Mm. But um, I'm, I must admit, we've, we've had a string of ACLs this year. And I'm beginning to wonder who makes the decision. Yeah. Would this be something the committee would like to uh, well, ask, the, ask the question? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. That's what we have a cabinet member for planning for. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for raising that, Karen. It's a very good point. Yeah. Otherwise, um, there's nothing, it's just really for us, us to notice unless anyone has a valid objection. Thank you. Uh, that finishes the planning applications. We have got a number of pre applications, most of which um, have already been replied to. I'm just going to mention the first one um, the land at the southern end of Verney Close. Um, Catherine, you, if you'd just like to make a point about the county. Yes, um, it's not at the southern end of Verney Close, it's mm -hmm. actually the building site straight opposite the office. Um, but the Officer has put the big red circle for the tree bang in the middle of the surgery car park. I really don't know why. Um, the thing is, the trunks of the trees are definitely outside the site boundary wall, so they're in county land. Now, you can't get county to put protection orders on their own trees because they say that they look after them nicely, thank you. Um, however, the applicant has ticked the box for that he owns the trees. So I thought, just to point this up, because the old ABC tree people do not appear to be talking to the old BCC tree people. And these are not within Neil's remit. So I thought that I would word it that on my response to that one, that if these trees turned out to be in the applicant's ownership, please could we have a TPO on all three new trees? Mm. Because if he's going to, I mean, Lee looked out of the window and he said, if he takes three meters off that tree, it's going right back to the trunk on half the tree, mm. which makes it lopsided. Doesn't do a tree any good either. Um, it's going to be so close to the building. If you've been down very close and actually looked at the wall of this block of flats, you would see where it is. 
we are going to see repeated requests mm -hmm. to trim mm -hmm. and chop yeah. and possibly even fell eventually. The application he put in earlier in the year to sort out, do a bit of trimming on these ewes and fell all the trees within the site was never decided. But it was only a, a conservation area application, which is effectively a notification of works. And it's once the if it's expired and that, that protection order hasn't been served, it's deemed to be consented. I think this is a very unsatisfactory arrangement. You've already put the question to my I've, I've already it. put it down on my response. You won't see it because. They're not for consultation, so I can't use the parish channel, so it doesn't go in as a parish comment. It goes in <laughs> as a public comment. And as we know, they disappear. Mm -hmm. So, you've heard what Catherine says, which is members that if it proves not to be on county land, that we apply yeah. for the three trees to be protected by yeah. tree preservation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. Do you want that proposal in a second one there? It's already done, Councillor Ralph. You, you get so little time on tree application. No, no, that was all right. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, if everyone's happy, we, we, if you wish to make a proposal, please do. No, no, no. Yeah. no. Yeah. But I mean, this is the sort of thing we need to take up with the actual tree people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're we're they're, they're not communicating with Paul. So, yeah. 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 For some reason, he tried to send the tree officer out by himself. Yeah. <laughs> okay. well, well, again, uh, most of the other applications. Um, so, let's say tick walking road, we, we've agreed it's work that needs doing. And the same with deciding uh, new trees which can be trimmed. But um, to London Road, there's two applications for that one from the landowner and one from Sainsbury's, which is the neighbour over the white fir, the white pine, which um, Councillor Stutchby has pointed out is quite unusual. And um, what the members feel about this one? Karen. I, I thought Michael Hunt's comment uh, was particularly apt. Uh, it, it is rather a distinguished tree. It doesn't seem to have disease in any shape or form. Um, pruning dead branches is one thing, felling it for the sake of losing one very beautiful and rather conspicuous tree it doesn't seem justified. That's just such I'm giving you some history a bit, um, which might help. Um, the actual site cinema was built by Mr. Parker, who happened to be my late wife's um, um, father's granddaughter. Um, and there was substantial planting on the actual site, which has mainly been deteriorated over a period of time, if you will recall. There was other conifers and stuff in Park, it's all right now. And so when the same site came in, we lost quite a lot of the green cover on the moon. The white pine, and my wife, unfortunately, not to correct me, but I believe it's planted by Grandpa. So um, um, it is set to the far corner of the property, and it is set to the far corner of the cinema property. White pines don't have very basic root balls. They're not that type of pine. Um, I've looked at the tree for a number of years for various angles, and it's always looked quite fine to me. Um, the property was sold to the people who have got it now from my late father in law, and, um, and they didn't um, mention it at the time. Um, so I'm not sure what's changed with the tree. In fact, it looks far healthier now than it did 25 years ago. And so, um, so obviously, um, it could be seen as a um, obscured reason for taking it down. It is the only tree on that London Road which sticks out like that, and it will be there longer than all the buildings if it's allowed to be. Um, um, the buildings will expire before the tree. They do live a long time, white pines, and they're not very fast growing either. And um, they actually become a hardwood. So, I'm really, I'm personally though, disappointed that the person's bringing it forward because I did look at it at the weekend and I couldn't see that it looked unhealthy. Um, and we seem to have lots of reasons to remove our trees in Buckingham. 
this is one on a personal note. I would rather keep because it's. Um, um, I don't think it's big enough to try and strap myself up there like Swampy, but um, but uh, um, um, and I'm not sure in this weather would be a good idea. But um, if it was warm, I'd consider it. Um, I don't really like the idea of people going on a personal note and um, speaking on behalf of my late wife, who is probably quite attached to it. Thank you, that's a try. I've said this before, but we ought to have an area designated for woodland that, you know, if, not that I agree with it coming down, but if it does come down, then the applicant should invest in another one in our woodland area, or if a you know, development has to take trees down, whatever they take down, they have to replace. Yes, if they won't grow, we won't be like this, but it would be a start. Because mm -hmm. at the moment, if you don't manage trees, and it seems as though maybe personal people and um, and uh, councils maybe haven't managed them to the, the best as they could do, they do get a problem. Um, so, you know, we need to keep looking at it. And the government said we need to plant more trees. So, you know, maybe we should find a little plot somewhere in our jurisdiction. Thank you. And Councillor Cole has also drawn attention to the phrase in the description. We are aware that more insurance companies are refusing to insure properties with large trees close to the property. Mm -hmm. This isn't definite, this is an allegation. I don't think it ought to have weight. Yeah, exactly. So this application is in it's a double one. The, the householder wants to fell the tree, Sainsbury's, who claim it's on their property, despite the fact that uh, there's a dividing fence between the tree and the same place. Um, they just simply want to cut, cut it back by two metres to allow clearance because they're, they're concerned it could cause a fire risk at the rear of their store. The cats are such big. My John thing this property is it, actually just inside the hedge. And my children are around that garden and that time. It's just inside the hedge. Mm -hmm. um, line and it's put there because it is in the headline. There's a lovely gate there which should have been painted with a special mechanism from Barbara Law, but um but um the children went through which you couldn't get out. It was a lovely safety gate he designed it. If you had only painted it, it'd been a rich man. Um but um I do I do think that um I am really serious concerned, let alone my prejudices around this and my concerns around this, that this is not uncommon that we are losing trees through threat of not being able to get insurance. Um, and it's such commentary. And it is worth noting the cabinet member for in, in the environment and planting has got a video today where he's talking about the importance of planting trees. And there's a video out there which will be played endlessly about the amount of trees back which is planted. These large trees take more carbon out of the atmosphere than loads of small trees because they're at the age where they can actually draw in huge amounts of carbon monoxide out of the atmosphere and they do do a lot more good for the oxygen. Whatever. Why do you think everyone's worried about the big trees being locked in Amazon? It's because it's substantial trees that do it. So there's going to be one tree, but we had all the ones, didn't we, which I know the chairman brought to our attention at Page Hill, and we'll get another one this year and we're discussing them. This problem endlessly in various places, but we are losing trees in Buckingham and, and it's almost spiced out. And it's worrying, it's worrying because they are part of our skyline, and that tree can be seen by everybody around. Thank you, Robert. Cats and Thank you. Just seems to me it's not joined up thinking. Everybody acknowledges we need more trees, not fewer trees to help us to reduce the impact of the climate crisis. So why is it that there seems to be a presumption that if a householder asks for a tree to be felled, because it might or might not be undermining their foundations and causing subsidence, that this is um, considered possible? Um, it just feels wrong. And as I said, it's not joining the two bits together, is it? I'm mm -hmm. wondering how we can and um, take that further with Buckinghamshire Council so that 
instead of there being a presumption that it's okay, which is how it seems to me it's, that it's um, dealt with, there should be a presumption that these trees should not be felled unless there's substantial evidence to show that it is appropriate. This has been our case for the past year, particularly as Councillor Sutchby mentioned, the three maple trees outside the primary school on Page Hill. And we have been trying to get a meeting with the tree officer, and this is the trust of ours, and we, we want to save these trees. Um, Councillor Ralph. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Sutchby rightly says these trees draw in a lot of carbon. Of course, if you cut a tree down, as somebody told me very recently, um, you release the carbon back out again. And so it's it's a, a double whammy. So the pragmatic solution to this appeared to be to refuse the household, oppose the householder's application, but approve the same as one. Agreed, yes. Mm. Yeah. So the committee is in agreement with that? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, for particularly Councillor Sutchford for the history lesson. <laughs> <laughs> My mother in law would have expected me to say something. She would have been very surprised if I said nothing. <laughs> you get your chance in a moment, probably, because uh, just uh, approved applications. Um, we had a full house here, five no objections, and five approvals, which must be a first, I think. Um, item nine to receive news of Buckinghamshire Council, new documents, and other information from our Buckinghamshire Council members present. That's the touch point that floor is yours. The pin floor today. Um, so you're aware, Buckinghamshire Council did pass a motion to write to various parties about dumping sewage in the river, which followed on from the wise decisions of Buckingham Town Council, um, chaired by the mayor. Um, but we would do the same. So it's awfully good that Buckinghamshire Council is following our lead. In um, so that's good. I also sadly to say that the licensing policy, which was discussed, um, has now the 24 hour licensing policy has been um, added to Buckingham's um, scene, which is um, difficult. Um, I did, nobody spoke on it from Buckingham except myself very silent um, and um, we went past there to watch. It wasn't a very heavy debate about it and um, I did point out to the chairman that I would be speaking regardless of whether he thought me and, um, and, and um, on it. So then he called me, which was fortunate for all of um, I did speak on it, but I am worried that that has gone through. The other elements around Buckinghamshire Council, of course, you will be where that we have um, written questions. Now, we did discuss um, the concerns around staffing and how much planning people are available and such like. Now, I have had a response at the last council meeting, which, which I've got here, which I'm going to hand to the chairman, which I think, considering it goes into several pages, they gave me several pages of response to the last one. It was awfully complimentary. Um, uh, um, the, that I think when asked we put that for discussion on the next agenda rather than I think it's worth noting because all this discussion we have about enforcement has been about planning and that the response in there though I may respond to the question response at some point um, addresses it now the council will be proceeding as it does forward so I think that's probably stuff related directly to planning. And the only other thing which I would mention is the proposal for um, the way they're going to deal with 20 mile an hour limits uh, went through. It was um, punched through the council, by the way, a number of things. Like, um, there was various opinions about what speed does. Um, and I would say that there's for every person who comes up with the theory that one mile an hour is okay. And the report stated that it would only reduce it by one mile an hour. But there's just as many reports out there 
which you could quote, which said he would, if you reduce speed limits, it produces more than one mile an hour in 20. Um, so what they're suggesting at 20 would only be 21. What I am really concerned about is how that affects um, the aspirations of Buckingham Town Council, which is the aspirations of the Laysville community and other communities have started talking about 21 hour. The motion stated that the financial burden would be put upon the applicant for the 20 mile an hour feeding, which is rather a nice way of making sure that any small village in Buckinghamshire can never have a 20 mile an hour speed limit, mm -hmm. because they would never afford an order. It also said with in conjunction with the authority. So the authority will be charging twice once to give you the answer that they won't give you 20 mile an hour speed limit or and then they'll charge for the cost of doing the 20 mile an hour speed limit. So I have today written to the a written question, trying to get some clarity around this ambiguity, because I am speaking as a Buckinghamshire Council now, I'm unhappy as a Buckinghamshire Council that the Town Council's application, um, led by <coughs> Council Anthony Ralph, who raised the transport 20 mile hour early on from this party, has sat there undetermined for a very large amount of time. I did ask the council, was there any coincidence between the fact that this application had been delayed and the fact that the um, sort of red cards and, and the fact that the application had been delayed, and the fact that it was well over 18 months that they've been seeking um, costs for a feasibility study, and this motion comes forward. Was there any coincidence? Cabinet members' response was, it must have been a coincidence, which actually suggests that it was no coincidence <laughs> um, that, that they changed policy. And I'm sure we weren't the only area of Buckinghamshire at this place who wanted 20 mile an hour limits. And the report stated, um, Fear and Bridgestone in the fact that Oxfordshire, who have implemented the policy, said it's going to cost £8 million. I'm sure Oxfordshire wasn't going to spend £8 million in one week. I expect what Oxfordshire budget is that to do the policy if people wanted it over Buckingham, Oxfordshire, would have cost £8 million. So it was scissors for against it, and people made various comments. But I think everyone was a loser. First of all, Buckinghamshire Council lost lost sense of um, identity as a new authority to be able to be more open. But I will see what the written response produces. And even now, as I sit here, Democratic Services back and back to me. Um, as you can imagine, I write very well. And um, uh, uh, it's probably gone to Bletchley Park. But um, <laughs> perhaps it's be deciphered and turned uh, more bucks into English. But um, I, I'm sure that we'll get there. So hopefully on the 7th, I'll get a response at Cabinet if they agree that North Bucks is English and that it can actually go to the Cabinet. But I do think we, can, we need an answer now what the policy is going to be, because if it's going to be the, the two questions, one is the historical decisions have no validity now because they were in the matrix. And that that both includes going forward and historical, it's a double example of Buckingham. Also, um, I did ask the cabinet member, was there any coincidence between the fact that there was a conversation between the, the community board chair and the cabinet members? And you thought that was crazy. Um, so um, I, I am really worried about this because it, not everywhere in Buckingham would be civil for 20 mile an hour limit, but everybody in Buckingham should have the right. In a, within a consultation to have determined properly whether they want a 20 mile an hour limit. What this does is push it, in my opinion, beyond the financial capabilities of many parishes in Buckinghamshire. Although I'm sure all my own Buckinghamshire councillors, we put it on from the precept to raise the precept by the £10,000, but automatically support that, I'm sure, um, without a shadow of a doubt, they'll support that. So, I mean, that's probably enough. And um, I apologise for going on. Thank you. Uh, questions, Councillor Rod. Thank you. Um, question to Councillor Stutchby about the 20 mile an hour limit. Um, accepting that there is county opposition to retrofitting 20 mile an hour limits here and there as required, 
Uh, was there any differentiation made between that and future developments? For example, obviously a way has not been built. Assuming it gets built, could we then have a 20 mile an hour limit set on that simply because they've got to put signs up so they might as well put 20 as 30 in terms of the hardware, the, the TROs and the rest of it. So for future areas, could and then over a period of time, of course, one moves towards uh, the desires of the local people. There was no expression of that within the motion. The motion was very plain yeah. and very brutal and very <coughs> like that. The amendment to the motion, which was completely, was much more um, fluid and, and took not the real thing. But it was worked upon over the weekend to make sure that it was um, including the views of everybody who was in favour of the opportunity 20 mile an hour. Unfortunately, it didn't make, make progress. So I think it's worth, once we get the response back, um, <laughs> hopefully then we can go to the next response, which is always when you ask a question, you've got to know what the next question is going to be. Um, which would naturally follow that that's where we go. And, and, and I think that is, if they're not going to use developers' money to do it, they're actually count, costing council tax pays thousands of pounds to actually do something which is quite simple, as you suggest, council tax, mm -hmm. um, it, within the development group. And it would seem ridiculous that they would be so hard nosed to prevent that. Um, and that would be putting costs in the future. Thank you, Robin. Uh, Councillor Harley, waiting patiently. Um, I, I follow this up quite a lot and have discussions on social media. I, I'm still very confused by exactly what the policy now is. So I think any clarity we can get on that would be most helpful. And I'm sure maybe the, the, the work that Anthony's leading on would be one way of testing that. But I'm also very concerned that, that much was made of the advice or the words from the Chief Constable of Thames Valley Police. So what I'd like to propose is that the Council writes to the Chief Constable to ask him what his advice is and the evidential basis for that advice, because there seem to be mixed reports. Rosper, for example, support both 20 mile per hour limits and 20 mile per hour um, um, safety zones. Um, which are slightly different to the, to the limits as, as such. Um, the zones are slightly more effective than the limits, but Ross will certainly support both. And that's based on evidential research. So I'd like us to ask the Chief Constable what his specific advice is, and also the evidential basis for that advice. And simultaneously, I'd like us to write separately to the Police and Crime Commissioner, who's on record at supporting the Oxfordshire policy on 20 mile per hour um, zones in, in, in that county and appears to be supporting it. So perhaps we can ask the PCC for what his position is on 20 mile per hour zones as well. There seems to be an awful lot of sound and fury about this and not a lot of effort to really look into the research and what actually works. I don't really, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, if 20 mile per hour speed limits don't work, fine. All I worry about is, is, is children getting to and from school safely and whatever way there is to do that that's fine with me i you know if it's a, it can't be a single a single silver bullet I'm, i know i know that we all know that but if it's a it's about finding the most effective mix that ensures that the children of buckingham are able to travel safely and are encouraged to travel safely by bike or on foot or skateboard or whatever rather than get into the gas guzzling cars that we know is wrecking our environment so there's a real need to think about safety, to think about the environment, because it all does link together. So that's my proposal. We write to the Chief Constable and separately write to the PCC. Thank you, John. Town Clark would like to say um, Yeah, I'll just be coming with a technical point. So just to note that because, because Councillor Harvey is on Zoom, so he can't vote, but technically that would also mean he can't submit a motion. Mm. So whilst he's very, what, what he just said is totally appropriate, could I, well, could I ask that somebody does this then and proposes it formally from the floor of the of the of the room? Councillor O'Donnell is happy to do that, John, for you. Thank you. And seconded by Councillor Davis. Thank you. Just to try and be helpful, John. 
there was a discussion. We had a very um, lengthy discussion of the several police constables from various areas in um, Buckinghamshire representing different areas. There was an expression which conflated that when asked a question about 20 mile an hour speed limits by, I think it was Councillor Peter Cooper who asked the question, the officer then sort of conflated the issue in the sense that he, he repeated what obviously is a different set of proposals than what was going on in Oxfordshire, because Oxfordshire clearly agreed to look at this, and the Thames Valley is, until I'm correct, is still part of, of Buckinghamshire, is still part of Thames Valley. So it's worth listening to what the police constable said, but I can't, I'm not going to repeat what a police officer said. Um, and I'm, I'm quite brave, but I'm not going to be that brave tonight. Um, but you can see his words and what he said, and the whole conversation around it seemed to be dour. Um, and then what we were treated to was the crime and police commissioner who didn't, for some reason, I couldn't make the meeting. So we had to have a look. If you go to the start of the webcast, John, it's there. And you can see what he says. He might draw you some more information around what he said in the public domain. If that helps you, because I did note the discussion on social media and I did add some information to it, but I didn't um, add it. I was going to choose to make my comments in Buckinghamshire Council. Thank you. We have got a motion in front of us um, that we like to the Chief Council and ask some his pin on this and what is the uh, mm -hmm. eventual support of it. Uh, all those are in favour of that? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Thank you. That's a guess. guess. Any abstentions? Thank you. That's Karen. Thank you for your report to Councillor Stutch. Because before we leave you, um, I'm indebted for you raising the question about the staffing of the planning department. When I learned at the uh, quarterly towns and parishes meeting that they've only got seven of the required 14 from the planning policy department, and we asked how can they possibly go ahead with local and neighbourhood plans when they're 50% down on staff. Um, Garrett Williams did provide this on the board that uh, Councillor Statue be presented. May I ask that we put that on the next agenda? Yeah. For discussion yeah. because there's a lot of information that we I, should, we should uh, discuss. I think yeah, something that I'm, I think I've seen the public domain just to send it across because I think there's some elements I know the Buckingham Society talking about these in their own media. I think there's some questions in there listening to the conversation that comes back from Caroline um, to this meeting. I think there's a whole conversation going on there about the state plan matters. Um, I have said to the council that. Gareth Williams, the cabinet member responsible, his response to Catherine, but I'll send yeah, it on to Caroline as well. I, I think it would be useful because yeah. it would mainly mean that when we get to that meeting, we can hear some additional views from the Buckingham side. I, 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 I will always have an opinion on it, you know that, but, uh, but I want to hear other people's opinion. My job is to get the answer, try and get the response. Thank you very much, Robin. Thank you for your report. Um, Buckingham, sure. So I've updated this to decide the undecided proposal to attend Corbyn's. Um, Catherine was attended. That's just because it was the same meeting. Yeah. Right. There's no change. No change to that. Thank you. Buckinghamshire Council Committee meetings, item 10. Uh, the North Park meeting, surprise, surprise, was cancelled <laughs> on the 11th of the 11th. Um, the strategic sites committees on the 18th of November and 25th. There were no Buckingham applications that I had them. Um, enforcement report any new breaches. Does anyone have any uh, breaches? Obviously, the main one's been the one that Maggie Tran presented tonight, continuing the problems down at uh, on Fellows Hall. Um, 11 2 Lace Hill Auxiliary or Attenuation Bond to receive and discuss the attached correspondence and agree any action. That's the statutory. I know you've been moving on this. Well, um, I read a lot of things that I mean, and the, the cat's correspondence would be to do with the, the continuation 
and there's the small pond which is adjacent to the new health centre donor, which is adjacent to the proposed development of a health centre which serves that section of the development close um, Sainsbury's and everywhere else. Um, it was not constructed correctly and it's um, it's going to be um, reconstructed. Now I corresponded with planning over it and they because they were um to be fair, the Res residents association of let's not beat around the bush, the residents association of Buckingham um Lace Hill have been chasing this for very long time. And obviously they're worried about the costs um, through the management charges of these things and they may not be aware of it. So what the response was was that, that they're monitoring it even though it hasn't actually had plan permission yet because of the um, necessity to do it. So I'm not sure where we go with that, um, but the, they are monitoring it. So it, even though it hasn't actually got planning yet, so um, clearly it's halfway through construction and it needs to be able to drain water, but they actually built it that way around when they should have built it this way around. And um, and they put the outlet above the inlet. Um, and, and lots of things which um, that even my rudimentary farm days, I could work out when one thing was higher than another. Um, but um, but um, I'm not saying I didn't get it wrong now and again. But, um, but um, yeah, so they're doing that. But I don't know where we go with it, but I do think we ought to correspond with the Residents Association um, about this and we should at least write to them and, and, and express our immense gratitude and their due diligence on these matters because I guess I have been supporting them. But with the, 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 the amount of paperwork they've had to go through, the amount of correspondence they've had to do to get to the point either there was an exception to that it was wrong and being constructed wrong in the first place was huge. And I'm not going to take credit for that. They, they've done that. Um, but I think we've had some colour to the situation um, um, and some conversations yet. So I hope we could at least write to them and say that you know, that we wish to support them in their efforts. Well, we did have a motion a couple of meetings back where I wrote them to support the Residents Association attitude for the application that's still sitting about. One of the things just one that we have to be aware of that, that though that's another situation, Jacob, you will realise that the pond adjacent to it, which is the was built to maintain um, that water from the whole state. Um, that in itself is um, a big liability to the community in the sense that there's still a discussion going on about that they consider it open space um, and that the residents should be contributing to the cost of that on the basis that it's considered open space. Um, um, I don't think it's particularly decorative, and um, and you know, if I've got small children, I wouldn't be suggesting that they go and play it. Mm. Uh, mind you, no, any my children they probably would go and play it, but <laughs> um, but, um, but um, it's not good, and it's it, it's just not how we should be doing that. And and my last correspondence is the roads still haven't been adopted. We're waiting for the ten year anniversary of the roads being constructed <laughs> and adopted. And I was thinking perhaps we could get the mayor to come up and. We'd have a cake and, and um, a candle on it and, and cut the ribbon on, 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 on the journey that the community's been on. I mean, I mean, it took us five years to get them to put us to the rear slope um, for the disabled people. So, so we shouldn't be surprised. Um, um, anything that's worthwhile is worth fighting for, isn't it? But I'm not mocking when I say this. This is 10 years that would be coming up to 2009, I think the original. It's not a big construction over that. I think it's 10 years construction, it still has not had the highways dotted. And that's because the development company who are doing it, or developers, are not hitting their targets with Buckinghamshire Council. To be fair to Buckinghamshire Council, they're not going to sign until they have, because they're false there. And because otherwise, we all pick up the cost of that forevermore. Um, so, with Tindrick Road being constructed, I'm sure we're going to be very busy for the next um, period. Thank you, Robert. Councillor David. I was just going to volunteer to make the cake. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Robin, for that report. If we they're continuing to monitor it, and then obviously we, we will as well. Thank you so much. The mayor knows that. The gutter grills on, on the, the mayor's road are on the uphill side of the slope. <laughs> Right. Which is why the water piles up against the curb on the bottom. Oh, God. I didn't hear yeah. much of what he said. I'm sorry. The gutter drills on the road are all uphill and, and the water flows down it. This is why you get a sizable pool against the curb against the school edge because all the gutter girls that they're supposed to take the drainage are on the uphill side of the slope. You haven't noticed. <laughs> they have to fill the road with water before they can start to work. <laughs> but, but they did correct, to be fair, they did correct one thing on the bypass because originally they had a drain flying from and um, flowing from where the continuation pond is across the bypass uphill um, to flow down through badges. And, and, and Go to try his laughing because he knows it's a conversation. We had especially we had to point out to them that that, that that you can't make water go uphill. And in fact, the only time it would flow was when the ditch was completely full, it would triple at the other end. Um, but we did, we succeeded, didn't we, Martin? We managed to prove to them that water flowed better downhill and they put a new drain uh, across the road. So, so that took us some considerable time, but nothing wrong with perseverance, is there? Thank you, Robert. Um, let's move on. Um, item 11.3 to receive information case numbers allocated to recent reports. This is because we were concerned a number of enforcement, alleged enforcement to reporting, we're going down a black hole. Catherine has now managed to get them given actual numbers so we can follow them. Progress reports would be nice, but yeah. numbers are a good stuff. Thank you. Um, application to foul trees. I hope this might relay some of the mayor's concerns that we are keeping a record of protected trees and conservation area trees that have been felled over the last two years. That's felled as opposed to trimmed. Um, I think that's really just for members to notice. Councillor Stutchby? Maybe we should um, make a little bit more about this in the trees that we should propose a motion to count along the lines of seeking Buckingham residents to adopt and the custodian for their trees in their area. When I say that, I mean, at the moment we deal with all these applications from the government side here, no other interesting part to do, because we see the application. We can only get all of Buckingham into that the trees in your area belong to you, and they're your trees. Something along the lines that to May 2022, Buckingham's year of the community adopting trees in their area and taking visual ownership of them, not actual ownership. I'm talking about taking ownership to monitor them, to look out for them, to watch them, and to um, report any changes. Because if we don't actually, in some way, all take ownership for these areas, we won't, when it comes to an application, it would just be the mayor, the tribe, and Davis. Absolutely, yeah, but having to speak up for it. We can get other people interested in it. Then it becomes a big community effort in 2022. Also, the work that Catherine's doing here, which is to monitor it, provides the evidence that this is necessary. I don't think anyone agrees with me, but I would propose that we do that to council for 2022 to in view of, of taking ownership of our trees and not in the financial sense. Thank you. We do, of course, have tree ones. We are also involved in trying to get a meeting with the uh, Akimshi trees, as you'll note from the action report. Yeah. I was going to say that, Chairman, that we, we did go out to the community about the tree wardens. Yeah. Um, so we have kind of done that step, and that was the reason that I wanted this um, list to be kept on these agendas mm -hmm. and to have a record of them because I noticed it was important that long ago when I was Chairman. We need somebody like you who notices that people have just ambitiously locked on soft trees regardless, especially public trees. I mean, then, yeah, up on the page, there's somebody with a 
real mania about <laughs> taking the top couple of feet off. We've been chainsaws going all morning. I don't know that was. I mean, that's really what I'm trying to get to is that, that the work we're doing here is brilliant. And the work that the chairman and everybody else is doing is absolutely brilliant. What we need to do is extend that out to the wider community. If it, it only to say that we think 2022 will be with the year of, of look out for your tree or for your friend to your tree, I don't think in your area report any changes and any concerns because. I think Councillor Jacob said earlier about the um, fact that it, what it takes in and burning it and get rid of the car. I think it was Councillor Gatley, if I'm wrong, or was it Anthony? Anthony. It's one of you. And, and, and I think that we do need to monitor it because the council, Buckinghamshire Council is making a lot of pleasant noises about planting trees, and, um, but they're not making the same pleasant noises when it comes to removing our. You wish to put a motion yeah, on the next time? I do, but I need to know that it's not just we want to say it. People don't want to do that. No, it'd be good to log it and then maybe we can turn her a new leaf. Is that a wrong suggestion? <laughs> so, would you like to make that motion to the next committee meeting? Because it's, yeah, tonight it's just to receive a report. Yeah. Um, thank you for that, Bobby. Um, Matters to report, item 13, damage, superfluous, redundant signage in the town, access issues, any other urgent matters? Anyone have anything here? I have two in that case. One is the bottom of Abington Road where it joins Stratford Road. One of the new entry signs has been reversed. Oh, oh. No, both of them facing the right way when I went home tonight. Oh, really? Right, this morning one was the wrong way. So. Yeah, okay, really, that's what, 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 about. what is one worrying though that if you go a little further along the Stratford Road, there's a no right turn at Wharfside Place. Oh, which um, was su ra rather sudden. I don't think it was there Friday. It is there now. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never noticed any particular problem with right turning traffic, traffic mm -hmm. coming from town. To turn into what side goes. No. Uh, I can only assume that that is the one that's actually back to front. And if you want to say no right turn, I think that's what I was going to say. The same people who probably reverse the, you know, the one way sign, probably reverse that as well, because mm. there definitely is a sign showing no right hand turn into Addington Road. Mm. And I suspect that's what's probably the same young audio. Somebody probably thought it was some amusing yeah, thing to do. Um, the other one I've got to report um, on the bypass Portum roundabout, one of the metal posts has been struck by a car that's leaving at an angle into the road with mm -hmm. traffic coming down the hill. And if mm -hmm. a truck got near that, it could actually uh, decapitate the drive. That needs very urgent reporting to drop them all for bucks. Councillor Stutchbury. Could they actually on our property and um, mention it? Um, do you know the way the Buckingham site belongs to Buckingham Town Council? It's very good that they're advertising the Christmas parade on it, but they haven't got anything to suggest that Buckingham Town Council contributes one penny to it. So it looks like the actual company who are putting signs that pay for the Christmas parade we actually contribute something close to four thousand pounds to cost the Christmas Day, and the company doesn't. So I thought we'd agreed years ago that if they do that, they've got to actually um, put something on it to say it's a town council. Yeah, I'm not for that. Um, so now, uh, and now we, again, the sign's going out. So what it gives the impression that the people who organise the parade either get the money from the company, and the town council will fund it, and do the road closure or whatever. Don't get noticed. Now, I don't know how many times we can answer this to be done, but I looked at it and the signs are doing what they're meant to do is advertise this parade, and it's not you know, doubt, but um, perhaps we should just go around and put stickers on these things um, so that people get some idea because four thousand pounds of the budget uh, is quite a substantial amount of money, and um, I think the council should get recognition for the officers time more importantly, and to coordinate the road closure. Sorting out the stewards and making sure that the event's legal mm -hmm. and funding every and most importantly, the event which is our mayor will be there and the advertises um, as we've agreed. Now, all that hopefully will happen in um, order, but it doesn't look good um, if we keep asking this. 
I don't know who we. It's, who, it's not really the planning. Well, it, it's, it's, not, it, yeah, but it's, it's just you want about signage. I'm yeah. just saying that they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're incorrect. It's probably sponsorship, isn't it, that we do like the dog show leaders advertise. Right. So it's just adding on there, sponsored by, and then the town council logo. At the sides of our have they? Mm, yes, yes, but okay. it was a decision that they shouldn't be done. Yeah. Um, less than four months ago. Mm. Nothing we can do about it, but I just think that we need to make sure that we're we to make that for the future. I mean, how many yeah. times we can raise it in the committee and then it happens, but yeah. we can't control the people to choose signage. Mm. We don't know who their sponsor is. So I don't know how we get that. It's not a criticism of the office, I'm sure it's not their fault. They can put it on our signpost. <laughs> Well, then that's perhaps something you can raise at your town centre. Well, I don't get raised, I just felt like saying it again. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything else? Anyone have any other items? I've got no items for information, so just to say the date of the next meeting, Monday, December 20th, following the interim council. So thank that's you very much, everyone, for attending. It is 8.35. <laughs> well done. This is the last time we no, I'm sorry, I just got out. We're not treading for the sun. We're on here. I'm sorry, I'm with Bob. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Well, I don't think we're going to have to call. I just, the next day,